In this video, we'll be going over count and say. The count and say sequence is a sequence of digit strings defined by the recursive formula. So in our base case, we have count and say 1, which is a string 1. And then for count and say n, it's the way you will say the digits from count and say n minus 1. So we define the count and say n minus 1 and then convert it to a different digit string. So determine how to you say a digit string split into a minimal number of groups so that each group is a contiguous section all of the same character. Then for each group, say the number of characters, then say the character. To convert the saying into, the, into a digit string, replace the count with a number and concatenate every saying. So in this example, we have 332251. So we have two threes, three twos, one five, and one one. So we have 233215 and 11. Let's first go over the dot process. We will implement a recursive approach. So for each of the number for each of the number n, we will first want to find the count and say for n minus 1. Then for each of the characters inside the previous string. So we call this prev. So count and say, we say prev for n minus one. And for each of the characters, c inside prev, we will want to keep track of the frequency, or which is a consecutive frequency of c inside prev. Then if we are then if we are at the end of the string or the next character does not equal to C, we will need to append count and C to our resulting string. Resulting string for our current count and say for n. Let's go through the pseudocode. So we will implement a recursive approach. And then, and then what parameters do we need? We will say n, the current number we are processing. And then what's the base case? In the base case, we have if n is go to 1, then we can just return the string 1. In each of the recursive call, recursively find the previous string for n minus 1. And then create a string builder current to keep track of the count and say for n. And then we'll create a variable counts to keep track of the frequency of the current character. Then we'll iterate through the iterate through the previous string. Iterate through the indices of prev. We say denote it as i. Increment will increment count basically increment the frequency of a current character. And then if i is at the last index, or the character at i plus 1 does not equal to to the current character, to the current character, to the current character at i, then we will want to append the count, append count to current, and then append the current character Append the current character to also current. And then reset count to zero for the next character. And then we can return a string representation of current. Let's go over the time and space complexity. What's the time and space complexity? Time complexity is equal to O of n times k, where n is the input value and k is the average length 
of each string. There are up to n recursive calls, and we iterate through k indices each. And our space complexity is equal to suppose of it's also of n plus n times k. So O of n is the recursive call stack memory. And O of k is each of the strings that's generated. The generated strings in each recursive call. Now let's go through the code. So if n is equal to 1, then we can just return a string 1. And then we will first find the count and save for the previous, for n minus 1. So previous go to count and save for n minus 1. And then create a string builder for the current. For the current count and save. And then create a variable to keep track of the count of each character. Then we iterate through the indices of previous. count if i is at the last index or the next character does not equal to the current character i does not equal to prove that char at i plus one Then we'll append the current count, append count, and the current character. Append current character to our current count and save. And then we'll reset count to zero. Then return a string representation of current. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below.